We mix our own clays, we always have. I have um, basically six bodies that I use here. A mixture of ball clays that we blend together. We, we've got an old dough mixer that we use. It's over 100 years old actually, and I nurse it. It's, uh, it's got like gold dust. We have a very simple glaze that is down to simple local clay and ash, just two ingredients. We get the clay from one mile outside the village that is, is a stream of black clay that runs diagonally across our riverbed, but it, it works really well in our ash glazes and also in our iron slips. As with most potters, there's something really, really nice about making pots with materials that are around you. It's, it's very exciting. Just taking the crudest of raw elements and, and sieving them, refining them, blending them into, into, into a glaze. The important thing in making any pot, really, is to compress the base well if you don't want those S cracks to appear. So the first part of throwing, opening out the, the clay, is to, is to put a nice bit of pressure on the base. The base is then finished. Um, then it becomes a cylinder, as so many pots begin as a cylinder. So that's how I throw them, a straight cylinder, then I fold the top in. Um, I leave a good thickness of, a good solid amount of clay where I'm going to form the rim uh, that the lid sits on. I, I have a sponge on a stick that initially I, I used to use just to get the water out of the pot because my hand, once, once, you for, once you've closed the top of the pot and you can't get your hand in, you need to get the water out. But what I suddenly, what I became aware of quite a few years ago was that I was actually using that not only to get the water, but actually to form the pot. This is a piece of boxwood ruler, um, and I use that to f help me form the outside. For all the pots I make, I have a series of these wooden gauges, which are rude bits of ruler that I've been using for years. I use that to form the actual gallery that the lid sits on, but I also use it to measure the width of the opening in the pot so that I get the lid to fit well. When I cut them, I, I use a twisted steel wire. That takes a bit of uh, air underneath the pot when I'm cutting it off. It makes it much easier to lift off the wheel. When I'm throwing the lids, it basically starts off as a bowl that I turn back on in on, on itself. And to be practical, a teapot is something we want our customers to, to really get to like them. So they've got to work well. It's no good if a, a teapot you buy is dripping everywhere or, or it's not comfortable or, or it's, you know the balance is all wrong. When you're pouring tea, you don't have to hold the lid on and do this kind of nonsense. You can almost turn these actually upside down, look, the lid's going to catch. So we tend, not, the lids tend to stay put. The secret, secret of that is not to make people have to turn the pot upside down to empty it. Um, also, to give, to give the uh, teapot a decent, the lid a decent skirt, which sits well inside the pot, brings a center of gravity within the pot. If it's gonna rock, it's gonna rock on this corner and it's not gonna fall off. That's important. The knob on the lid is thrown separately when I'm assembling the pot. I tend to throw the spouts off a hump because um, there's no problem with the S cracking. Th throwing off a hump, the only problem with it is it, you can't really compress the inside of a pot when you're throwing off a hump because you press down and the clay just goes sideways. Or... When I throw the spouts, I, I tend to put them onto a sheet of formica or, or you could put them onto a wooden board that's got some polythene on it, something that isn't absorbent. That enables the, the, the spouts to remain uh, soft and yet the tip of the spout will dry off a bit, in, uh, enough for you to handle, to apply to the, the body of the pot. 
uh, I like to press the pots, the spouts onto the pot. With practice, with experience, you get, you get to know your clay and this, the, a wet spout can go on a, a slightly drier body quite happily. It, it's important to know your clay. There's this thing, that when, when you're throwing a pot on a wheel, you're, you're automatically putting a bit of torque into the clay. And if you look down on your wheel, my, my wheel rotates in an anti-clockwise for throwing an anti-clockwise direction. Um, so you're actually holding the clay back. You're holding it back in a clockwise direction, looking down. So when, you, when the clay relaxes, it wants to go the direction the wheel is going in, which is anti-clockwise. So when I cut the spouts, I, cu I try and adjust that by cutting them at a slight angle so that as they dry, they will straighten up. Um, it's very annoying, uh, if you don't know your clay well, to cut everything dead square after the firing. You notice it, the tip's at a funny angle. Uh, people don't like it. They won't buy the pots if, if they look strange. And, and also, they don't work well, actually. They tend to dribble if that happens. So that's a good tip. Also, putting handles on, um, especially on jugs, again, there's torque within, from the bottom of the pot to the top of the pot, there's a slight twisting. And you'll find a lot of jugs you look at, the handles have gone sideways slightly. The way to avoid this is to throw with soft hands, throw gently, and try not to put too much torque into the clay. If you throw quickly um, on very dryish clay, then you are, then you are gonna put torque into the clay. When the handle's been on the pot for usually an hour or so, I open this section up here, the bottom of the uh, pot, and that gives, that gives plenty of room for your fingers to fit. Again, I put them on a slight angle because I know my clay is going to twist and hopefully they'll true up. When they're leather hard, which can take overnight in the winter or a couple of hours in the summer, I cut the spouts at an angle and something I like, I've always liked doing for years, I don't know where I first saw it, is to roll a piece of square, inch by inch wood, down each side of the facet, in other words, in four places. And that gives me a nice little frame where, again, using the same wood, uh, I can give slight indents. It placed carefully in the right place, I think they enhance the pot. Your eye sits on them, and also this ash glaze pulls beautifully into them. The, the other thing I, I've always loved doing is fluting. I, I have to be careful because having been trained as an engineer, I, I'm not trying to produce gear wheels here. I don't want it to be too precise. Um, I, 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 I don't want stiff elbow. It's just a question of just flowing with the form. I once went to a, a fantastic uh, demo by Takeshi Yasuda. And he said, if you're not sure how to decorate a pot, ask it out loud, how do you want to be decorated? He said, if there's no answer, it doesn't want to be decorated. Sometimes the pots do answer somewhere. In, inside you get a message, no, I, I need to decorate that pot. Others, I don't. Um, or if you do decorate pots, just only to enhance the form, not, not to hide it, not to smother it. Simple. I mean, Potter's incredibly fortunate. What a nice thing to do. You know, we're very privileged to be able to just make things out of mud. You know, it's amazing. And actually be paid to do it. I don't look forward to ever retiring. <laughs> One day I'll fall off my wheel, I know that. But uh, until then, I'm going to carry on enjoying myself. <laughs>